1965, man hadn't yet reached the moon, and other planets were still a pipe dream. But Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry wanted his fictional starship, the USS Enterprise, to travel the universe effortlessly, and more importantly, believably. Roddenberry, looking for a way the Enterprise could cover these incredible distances, found the answer in the theories of the most celebrated physicist of all time. In his general theory of relativity, Albert Einstein showed that space and time are intimately connected and that you can think of space-time as a kind of fabric that stretches and bends. If we actually compressed space in some fashion, we can reduce the distance between our starship and the place it wants to go by a tremendous amount. So while it is theoretically possible to warp space, one huge problem stands in the way of making it a reality. It would take a tremendous amount of energy to warp space. So in Star Trek, we have this hypothetical warp drive, and it works in a very specific way. Matter and antimatter are collided together, which produces a tremendous amount of energy. When Roddenberry first devised the antimatter warp drive as a way to travel to the stars, physicists knew antimatter existed, but they hadn't been able to isolate it. Five decades later, one of the world's most expensive physics experiments here at CERN in Switzerland has finally made the science behind Star Trek's warp drive a reality. Physicist Jeffrey Hankst now works with antimatter on a daily basis. The use of antimatter as a propulsive uh, source of energy in, in Star Trek is exactly right. In principle, if you knew how to harness that, it's the most weight-efficient uh, rocket fuel you can imagine. Thanks to scientists like Hankst and his team, it has been proven beyond doubt that when matter meets antimatter, they annihilate each other, releasing a huge amount of energy in the process. Say I have some antimatter and I'm going to use it in my spaceship to react with matter to create energy. How do I actually engineer that into something that produces thrust? Okay, I don't know how to do that. Uh, that's the beauty of science fiction. You don't have to go into the details. But I can promise you it's much more complicated than, than, than you can imagine. Even if scientists did come up with a safe source of fuel for a warp drive engine, it would be a struggle to produce the amount of antimatter needed. We're dealing with single atoms. Say a gram of antihydrogen will get you a few liftoffs, perhaps. But it would take something like a hundred billion years, all right? That's longer than the known age of the universe to accumulate that type of antimatter with the technology that we have today. It's just insurmountably difficult. 